What's up YouTube, Bizmath here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you all are going to hear me cold call a seller that has two properties that he is looking to sell. So if you all find value from this, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. And in this video, you all are going to hear me actually build rapport for most of the phone calls. So we start talking about stock investing. Uh, we talk about the recent game stock frenzy that happened and everything like that. So I want to really show you all that you have to build rapport on these calls. And sometimes you have to start talking about other things in order to really um, build that rapport and just um, go to their level and speak their language because he was really into stock investing. And I got, you know, some money in the stock market. So I know enough to have a conversation about that. And then yeah, we just start talking about that and a little bit about the house. The actual phone call was probably like 40 minutes, so I kind of chopped some things down. Um, but you all hear all the important things, what to ask, you know, how I'm building rapport and different things like that. All right, let's get right into the call. Hello? Hi, William? Yes, this is Matthew. You spoke with my partner Trey about your property on Greenbrier in Chattanooga. Okay, what company are you with? You you've been thinking about possibly selling that property? I actually have two for sale. And with these properties, are they currently vacant or are you renting them out? Um, they're vacant now. Okay, okay. Were they recently rented out before? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm actually looking for possible rentals for myself. Um, so um, with these properties, I mean, were, how much were you able to get for rent? Um, the one at Forest Highland uh, was 800. Okay. But. I was going to rent it for 1100 She was there for seven years. Okay. And the market's changed a lot in seven years. Right, right, for sure. Uh, um, and then the green bar was 975 Okay. So 975 and then this one was 800 the one on Forest Highland. Okay. All right, and so with these properties, you know, why, you know, why, why now the time to, I guess, sell them, you know, why not keep them for longer term rentals? Well, I'm 65 years old. I'm retired. I had 12 rentals. I sold two in the last six months. Okay. And so I'm selling these two now. I enjoy sitting on my couch and trading stocks. <laughs> and I'm also starting a 529 for my grandchildren to pay for all their college and high school tuitions. Okay. So all this money will go into the 529 um, account for their college. Okay, okay, got you. So you just want to live out the best years of your life in retirement, take care of your grandkids and different things. Um, but did you get into the GameStop craze earlier this year? No, <laughs> um, I did not. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was fun and interesting, but I didn't, um, I didn't take advantage of that if I could have. Okay. But um, yeah. That's not part of my. A little bit more stable stocks, but I, I do speculative ones too, but not that one. Okay, yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm trying to formulate my own investment strategies. You know, whether I should just like diversify it across like mutual funds, ETFs, or like specific stocks. Right. What do you usually do? How do you usually set it up? Well, if you got five minutes, I'll explain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what yeah. I do is find companies that are really excellent companies. Mm -hmm. um, and that's called fundamental research, where you look at the fundamentals of the companies. Mm -hmm. And these are companies that are making a good profit, are low debt, mm -hmm. um, have a wide moat, which means they don't have a lot of direct competition and mm -hmm. then after I find these fundamental companies I do diversify into different sectors okay um, for example right now transports are doing really well okay because the economy is improving and people have to transport things so trucking companies right have gone up a hundred percent since the COVID started 
A lot of companies have gone up 100. percent More, most of my it's, companies have increased 100 percent in the last six months or so. Yeah, it's crazy. So I find these companies the fundamentals, and then I mostly trade on technicals. And okay. technical analysis is where you look at the charts of their stock price. And so if you look at a one month, three month, six month, five year chart. It gives you comfort if you see a company that has a fairly steady right. upward progression. Right. And then if you really want to be more speculative, you find companies that have a fairly rapid mm. upward projection. There's some companies that have doubled in the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. If you have a 15 year time horizon, that's great. But if right. it doubles in one year, mm -hmm. then that's a lot better. <laughs> right, exactly. But those companies are often overvalued. Right. So you have to take that into consideration. Um, if they're overvalued, then like with GameStop, mm -hmm. it went up like a rocket. Yeah. And it pulled back because it's overvalued. Exactly. And finding what the fair value is is difficult on a stock like that. So I usually am kind of cautious and do stocks that, like I say, three months, six months, one year, a fairly steady progression gives you some assurance that it's going to continue in that path. Right. So once I have those stocks, um, and those can also be ETFs, mm -hmm. mutual funds have fees. They're usually a little bit higher. Yeah, that's true. Unless it's an index fund. If you're just starting out an index fund like QQQ or SPY mm -hmm. are a great start just to follow the market. Okay. And they're very low, at very low cost. Right. Um, for the management of those. So that's a way to start and then watch. Um, the other thing that you can do is called paper trading. Right. That's where you, you trade. You yeah, you, yeah, you trade without actually having like skin in the game yeah, without actually money. You're right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go for a few months and if you're successful, then keep going with that strategy with real money. Right. Down the road. If you're not getting lost anything. It makes sense. So that's the way I do it and oh. I've done really well. And, okay. Um, Okay. Yeah, the, the properties were all paid for that I bought, and they sent my kids through college. Okay. And now they're going to send my grandchildren through college. <laughs> <laughs> right. So how, how long Back have you... In the good old days, you could refinance with cash out. And that's, right. You know, that was 12% 12, 12 interest when I bought them. And, um, wow, you know, that's so crazy. Went along, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's what it was. It's going right back then. Dang. So it's a hot market now. Right. How, well, how long have you been in the in the stock market? Uh, about 15 or 20 years. 15, 20 years. And so what? which one do you prefer, the real estate market as an investment tool or the stock market? Um, they both are great in their own way. For mm -hmm. example, Forest Highland Circle, mm -hmm. I put $5,000 of my money in. Okay. I bought it from a fellow teacher and had a owner um, financed the rest of the down payment and my rents covered PITI. Right. A little bit of repairs on a fifteen year on a fifteen year mortgage. I always do fifteen year mortgages. So mm -hmm. I'll pay it off in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So I just had five thousand in it and you know, it's worth one hundred and fifty thousand now. Right. So that's a pretty good investment for fifteen years. Mm -hmm. But you had to manage it and do repairs and all that kind of stuff. So um, I live out in Cell Creek, and it's you know a thirty forty minute commute to these properties. And right. I do a lot of the work myself to save money. I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. Um, like I say, it's easier selling the couch and trade stocks. So. Right. <laughs> that's but, true. For a person your age. Having multiple sources of income, I think, is great. For right. Your salary, your rental properties, and the stock market, different buckets. Because sometimes they don't all go up and down at the same rate. Mm. Um, so it's good to have different sources. And that's what I did, too, in my life. I had different sources of income. Okay. So real estate was a great, sure thing. You know, the properties are insured. You get rents. Right. Um, so it's pretty much a sure thing, and the properties appreciate in value over time. Right. Yeah, because I was asking that because I know with, you know, real estate, of course, you know, they can double in value, like, within those 15 years.
But some stocks, they can, yeah, you know, triple or, you know, 4x within those 15 years. So I was just wondering if, like, the returns were, were I guess, well, a little bit high. Yeah. When I was 28 or so, 29, I was pretty broke. I could afford $5,000 to start with a house. Mm. But $5,000, even if it doubles in 15 years, that's $10,000. Right. It that's true. Two or three years. With inflation and so it, right. it costs a lot less to get into, you're leveraging an asset when you do a real estate property. Mm-hmm. When you're buying a stock, you're not leveraging an asset unless you use options, which are often bad, right. or buy a margin, which can really get you in trouble. Exactly. That's what GameStop did. Mm-hmm. People bought on margin, then it got shorted, and then they lost their shirt. Right. Uh, <laughs> got you. So Unless it were you know, shorted. Okay, so when you so got... They both have yeah. their, own, their own good things. Okay, okay, so... I'll be honest with you, yeah. these properties, for the price I'm asking, they're probably, it's going to as is, most of the buyers are going to want to fix them up and resell them in a hot market. Um, what I'm asking for, it'll be tight to get rents to cover it. Oh, That's okay. Um, we're kind of like you, maybe. They were investors that... We're asking them original questions, and so basically what I think this company did was they bought it from me for a good price, and then they flipped it to these investors at a higher price, right. higher asking price. Right. The profit without before the closing, which is honest and fine, and I don't yeah. mind that I got the price I asked for. Exactly. Win, win, win. Right. But, um, but that's kind of the way they did it. So, yeah. But they didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you know, I have, you know, I've done deals like that before, but I'm always transparent with my sellers. I say, hey, you know, I work with investors and buyers, and if it works for them, well, that's you know, fine, yeah, 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 and different things like that. If anybody brings me an that's great. Right. I'm asking 155 as is right now mm. for the house. It's got a huge yard with a fenced in. Um, Backyard, and okay, like it's vacant right now. Okay, it's on a cul-de-sac, nice quiet area. Okay, okay. So you actually one fifty-five for that, and then I guess you, my main concern, I guess, with that house would just be the floors in the kitchen. You know, I just just to know the extent of like what's underneath there and what's causing the you know the sinking in the floors and stuff like that. Um. Well, yeah. I can tell you, because I fixed it, a refrigerator leaked or a sink leaked. Mm. Y'all have got the same seminar. Right. Anyway, they ask the questions, and then they forward that information to the guy with the money. Uh-huh. And then the guy with the money is supposed to get back with me to have it inspected. And so all this has happened the last two days. Oh, okay. Got you. <laughs> Dang. I know. You're probably uh, a lot of bombarded. how this works. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I don't know how everybody said my name. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I think, um, you know, like people, we have access to like records of, I guess, landlords, people right. who, who own properties, but they don't live in it. So, you know, usually oh, people. Yeah. For people... the last five years, I get three or four cards a week. Right. How, how has your renters been over the past few months, you know, with COVID and everything? Have they been, been... paying on time? The, the wealthy ones have been doing great. The um, poor ones, one got COVID and her mm. job was cut in half. Wow. And um, she moved voluntarily because she needed, you know, she lived it for seven years and she knew that she wasn't going to be able to keep paying as much rent. So she just moved out on her own, which is nice. Right. The other one, the other boyfriend who really made the money. They broke up. He moved out, so she had no money. Oh no! <laughs> it's kind of yeah. Right. I think you've heard a few stories too. Anyway, have you ever, I guess, with your properties, um, considered selling them on terms? Yes. The last time I did that, the person went bankrupt, and I lost thirty thousand dollars that I would have gotten. Oh dang, <laughs> dang! I guess I guess you might be a no, little bit scarred was, from that. I was just wondering if you ever considered selling some of those properties on owner finance, like small down payment, well, and you act as the bank. Doesn't meet, it doesn't meet my goals of putting it into the stock market and investing it that way. It does provide an income stream, but I don't need an income stream. I've got other sources of income that are 
and adequate for my needs. So probably that would, you know, I, buying all of my houses, I tried to use other people's money as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And that is the way to go. Um, right. You're right in doing it. If you, can, if you can do that, that's great. Right. But um, for my situation, it's probably not, you know, I could do it, but it's not really meeting my goals. Got you. Makes sense. All right. Well, I don't want to hold you any longer, William. But okay. uh, yeah, it was good speaking with you. And by the way, do you go by Will, Bill, Billy, or William? I go by Ed. My middle name. Ed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got you. you. Go by Ed. Oh, William is fine. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, yeah. Well, I hope you have a, a, a great weekend, and I'll just follow up with you. Okay. All, All right. Buddy. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. That was the call. I hope you all really enjoyed the video and just listening to how I was building rapport and just the things he was saying and different tips that you can apply when you're cold calling. I don't know if financially the numbers make sense for a wholesale deal. Um, that's why I did present like a creative deal like seller financing or something like that. But he spoke about it. He didn't really care about it that much. But um, we'll just see. But I have two properties that I can possibly just view and show you all the properties if that's possible and bring you all along. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Once again, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace.